Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at another post beta 1 build of Windows Whistler. Um, this is build 2416. So this is the third post beta 1 build out of four in total. So this part of the setup process is typical Windows NT setup process really. And it's been identical from the first version of NT all the way through to XP. From Windows Vista onwards, um, setup essentially booted you straight into a graphical user interface so you had mouse control etc so with that in mind I'm going to pause the video when I go through the first part of the setup and I'll I'll show you the actual um, I'll show you the part after the first restart So setup has restarted now and we're at the boot screen. I think if I remember correctly this is actually one of the last times that we'll see this boot screen because it gets changed again. Okay, so like the first post beta 1 build, this build is identifying itself as beta 2, even though it's not the beta 2 build. But obviously, if you think about the time scale, when, I mean, when this build was compiled, for all Microsoft knew this could be the beta 2 build, but obviously they had further improvements to make before beta 2 went out to testers. So all the post beta 1 builds up to beta 2 do identify themselves in setup as beta 2 for that reason. So again, typical setup process. I showed it in more detail in the last video for build um, two four one zero. So I'll pause setup. Uh, sorry, I'll pause the video when setup completes. Right, setup's finished now, and we're at the boot screen. Now, when you log in for the first time, you'll get asked this question. Do you want Windows to automatically correct your screen resolution and color depth settings? Now, if you press no, it'll take you straight to the desktop and you won't get the out-of-box experience. If you press yes, it'll change your resolution to at least 800 by 600 and you'll get a nice surprise. So I'll, I'm going to pause the video, let it do that, and then capture it quickly so you can see it. Okay, so the settings have been changed. I'm going to let you see the out-of-box experience. Okay, so as you can see, this is looking a lot more like the XP out-of-box out of experience now. Well, the, the general XP look, really. Okay, so the sound was a bit garbled, but it's still using the 2000 Millennium Edition startup sound. So we've got Merlin for help as well. Okay, so you need to specify whether you're on a home network or not. And it asks you to activate, and I think this is the first build with activation built into it. But I'm going to press no, because I'm not going to be using it for that long, it's not going to work anyway. 
So, I'm the only person that's going to be using it. And that's the end of the out of box experience. Right, so we're just waiting for it to take us to the desktop now. Right, so as you can see, it's not looking any different to build um, 4910. Sorry, build 2410. Um, what we do have is some more options for performance. So we've got things like animate windows when minimizing and maximizing. And I'm not sure why it's not selecting all those. It's probably a bug. So I'm going to select everything. No, I don't want to do that. Um, yeah, so we've got drop shadow on the desktop. I can't remember whether that was in the last build or not, but we've got it in this one. As you can see, we're still using the watercolour theme at this point. And I think this will be IE6. Yeah. So we've got watercolour. We've also got box standard wallpapers. And screen savers. These are not any different to the last build. Yeah, and we've got the same visual styles to the last build as well. Now one of the things that apparently has changed in this build is an, we get a nicer help and support interface. Now I didn't look at the one in the last build but you can see that this one uses XP icons. And it does look acceptable. Interesting, the start menu, I've changed to this vis sample visual style and it looks like um, the XP start menu when you run, when you're running in classic theme. Right, so this is 5.1, so it's got the correct version number for XP. And we've got the things we'd expect to find in an evaluation build, such as file bug report, which I mentioned in a previous video. Let's put these icons on the desktop. So again, XP icons. Still got remnants of 2000 icons, however. Don't get any sample pictures yet. Okay, and we've got the release notes from the first beta still in this build. I'm not expecting that anything else is going to be different, really.
still on the 2000 sound scheme. We've got a new icon for the sound panel. I think it's a new icon anyway. I don't, I don't remember seeing it in the last build. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that's a new icon. The XP icon. Let's see what components we get. We get. Yeah, you're bog standard. You'd expect to find components. Now, what I wanted to try and do in this build, because I haven't done it in any of the other ones so far, is try and actually install some software that was designed for XP. So I'm going to attempt to attach a USB drive and see if it will detect it. It's showing some hard drive and USB activity, so I'm just wondering whether it's detecting it but taking a long time. Ah, uh, now the USB controller is not installed. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work actually. But since I'm on the internet, I can t I can try downloading some things. So let's just try Opera. And obviously, I wouldn't recommend running this as a day-to-day -day operating system because, for oh. one, it's not supported by Microsoft and ever never will be or has been so there are no server p service packs there aren't any updates okay I've cleared some disk space I'm going to attempt to download Opera again I've just noticed this as well actually, if you click on an icon on the desktop you see you get this sort of square selection box around it and it just reminded me of Vista 7 and Windows 8 because it's the same sort of thing that happens in, that, you know, in those systems and it just made me think about how similar the watercolour theme is to the modern Windows themes they're all quite boxy and just yeah. Right, so this is the latest version of Opera. Let's see if it will work. I don't see why it wouldn't, to be honest. But I mean just for the sheer fact that there is no USB support, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend using this operating system. Maybe I spoke too soon. Yeah, it's having issues. It might be to do with the theme. Possibly. I don't know. Yeah, it was the watercolour theme bugging it up. But it works in classic.
Okay, so what I've done now is I've downloaded some more software that we can try to install. So we'll start with Sigate Personal Firewall. Now I keep getting low disk space warnings because I've only got about 100 megabytes left, but that's enough for this software. Okay, so I'm going to try VLC. I'll restart at the end to see whether Sigate worked. Uh, VLC is too large. Let's try C Cleaner. I don't want these free bits of software. Okay, I don't get any options to get rid of them. Yeah, so CCleaner is working. It's identifying the system as XP professional, as you'd, as you'd expect, really, with the version number. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'll try Firefox as well. Right, so Firefox is not working because it, it wants XP Service Pack 2. That's fair enough. Let's try Skype. Okay, can't even get Skype to open. The installer. So, yeah, it's a bit hit and miss. Obviously, the system... <coughs> the closest released system to this one is XP without any service pack. So I wouldn't expect most software to support this system. I mean at this point in time it's in league with Windows 2000 in terms of support. So yeah, but I thought it was interesting to try and install some things anyway. I'll restart now and I'll see if Sigate personal firewall works. So I'll pause the video when I do that. The system's rebooted now and Sigate does appear to be working. Yeah. So that's working fine. I don't think the firewall's included yet, is it? No. So you don't get the Windows firewall at this point. Ah, now I've just come back into control panel because I forgot to check. I wanted to check whether anything had changed in the user accounts options. Now if you click on your account name in this build, you do get an option to change your account picture. And I think that's the first time you do get that option. However, this is your selection. Now you can browse for your own pictures, but as for the included ones, you basically get different colour t-shirt on the little avatar. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to show you that. So that is essentially Whistler build 2416. Now this build was compiled on 16th of January 2001 and it and it wasn't actually that long afterwards that Microsoft confirmed the final name of the operating system um, I think that was sometime in early February I think it was the 9th of February or something like that where they confirmed that it would be called XP so we're actually not that far away from XP and specifically the second beta version would would the system would identify itself as XP at that point and from that point onwards so I mean and obviously XP went to manufacturing in October 2001 so we're really not that far away 
from the end product at this point. Um, got the lock the taskbar option as well. That's good. Yeah, so this has been a video showing build 2416 of Windows Whistler. In the next video I'll show the next post beta 1 build um, which which actually has a lot more changes in it. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.